You are listening to the Reraceables podcast. Hello and welcome to the Reraceables podcast. I'm your host Tom, and I am lucky to be joined today by a very special guest, Gary Barnage from The Amazing Race, season 32. Gary, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you having me on. Is that a map back there that I see? Yeah, like, so uh, where you been? A map of the world and then the U.S. And they have pins on places I've been and places I want to go. So I mark off places I want to go, and then I have little pins for it. And then I go once I go there, I re- I change it with the new pin. See, look at you. See you, my brother. This I is, like it. It's one of my favorite things I have. You know, similar I to recommend- yourself. Got all the pins. I recommend anybody to do that. Even if you don't have the means to travel, whatever, it gives you goals to go for. Because it, you might put it in there, you might not ever get to do it, but at least you have the goal, I'm going to go here one day. And it puts that goal in your head and you're going to strive to do it. And then that achievement you get when you go there is going to be tremendous. I, I, it's such an easy thing just to, hey, set that goal for I'm going to visit this country. I'm going to see this one day. It's going to be done. So when you do it, you can look back and say, this is what I did. I knew I was going to do it, and now I did it. And it's just going to be so much better of an experience for you. So let's turn to the race. How much did your foundation and creating these experiences play into you saying yes to the amazing race? Uh, I, I would say some of it did, but uh, I would say some of it did, some of it didn't. So the backstory was me and D'Angelo were actually in South Africa visiting Ahmed, who was the, one of the founders of the, the nonprofit. And we were visiting him and somehow the amazing race got brought up. So I was like, D, would you ever have interest in doing the amazing race? And he's, he's like, Oh, I don't really know what it is. What is it? So we explained to him, it's a race around the world and you get to see all these different countries. You get to experience all these new things. And uh, you, I said in previous seasons, people have gotten to explore the areas and see different things when they're when they had time. He's like, oh, that sounds awesome. I would definitely. He didn't say that. I'm not. I'm lying. He didn't say that was awesome. I would definitely do it. He said, yeah, I'd probably do something like that because that's how D is. And then yeah. so you fast forward about six months later, they have the little trial where you can send a video, and I'm like, we're at Disney together. I'm like, D, we gotta send this video for the. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, six months ago you said uh, you would do it. He's like what i just said yeah i would do it that didn't mean i was actually wanting to do it and then so i was like yeah. well you said yes so you're <clears> locked so he's a man of his word so i locked him in and then we made our video sent it in we were lucky enough to get selected and a lot of it was it's about the competitive aspect we had just retired two years prior so we haven't had a true competitive atmosphere yet so i think some of it was let's travel, let's experience all these new things. And some of it was the competitive aspect because we haven't got to feed that part of us yet. So having both of them combined was huge. So what did you do in the video? We just ripped on each other. Same thing we did on the show. <laughs> that, that, that's our relationship. All of our relationship is, is we just joke on each other the whole time because we're not emotionally tied to anything we say to each other. So we just joke on each other, poke and prod and that's our relationship every day all day and i guess they enjoyed it because it i guess it makes for good tv because that's how we always are our whole thing of when one of those things says negative reinforcement that's how we are we never compliment each other it's always you're terrible you're this you're that get better but we feed off of it that's how we are with each other and i think that works for us it does not work for a lot of people but it works for us no and that comes through and it's it is what made you guys entertaining and, and not just to myself, cause I'm a football fan and, and rooted for you guys literally, but to my friends who also do the podcast with me and that are have theater backgrounds, you know, like they, they found you guys compelling for all those reasons. So you got cast traditionally or was it, it wasn't, it doesn't sound like you were recruited. It like was not recruited. We did send a video in and they flew us wow. out for the, uh, the the audition stuff we did all that stuff it was not recruited we were guaranteed to be on nothing we sent the video into them see that may, that's never in a million years would i have guessed that that's that makes it so much well, let me clarify more, uh, i sent the video in because i was the <laughs> ringleader of it <laughs> So then what's the strategy coming in? 
right? You guys are football players. You watch tape to prepare for, you know, Baltimore or whoever it may be. And you study and you do your thing that way to put yourselves in the best position to be successful. What was the strategy coming in? How much preparation went into it? Talk me, uh, talk me through that. So for me, I binge watched 10 seasons. So I didn't grow up watching the show. I didn't watch a lot. I don't, I didn't watch a lot of shows. I wa- I'm a movie guy. So I watch a ton of movies. So I didn't watch a ton of shows. I had seen episodes here or there, but I wasn't like fully involved with the show. But once we had the ability, I'd binge watch 10 seasons in a row to prepare. And then I told D to watch some. He just relied on his coach, me, to get him through that. He had it on, but I don't think he really paid attention, which I, I knew that going in. That's why I prepared for 10 seasons, because I knew I was going to have to carry it, which was fine. I'm good with that. I right. we, we counter each other, so I'm good with it. I can handle it. And so I prepared by doing that, watching 10 seasons. And obviously, you can never prepare for the race. You can only guess you're right. prepared, but nobody's actually truly prepared. So what did you learn in those 10 seasons? Well, did you watch did you watch 10 in the beginning or 10 most recent ones? The 10 and most what did recent. you learn? Yeah, I watched the 10 most recent. And there you obviously had some where you don't want to make enemies. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. The biggest thing, which even look back now, was which we did not do because it's hard to do it because your adrenaline's going. But if I ever did it again, I would 100% apply the strategy is everybody rushes. Everybody goes too fast. You don't need to slow down, relax. That's the biggest thing I even saw. And it's easy to say that now, but when I was watching, I said the same thing. I was like, everybody's going too fast. They got to calm down because everybody's so all over the place. So I told yeah. D we need to do the same thing. And obviously we did not on a lot of things, but that's because your <laughs> adrenaline's going. You think you can do it until that time's coming. But if I ever had the opportunity, I 100% would, everything would be slowed down. I might be in the middle of the pack the whole time until you just separate yourself at one of the challenges because that's when you do it. You don't have to rush. And that's when you miss things that other other people miss. And if you don't miss them, if you don't miss anything, everybody else is going to miss something at some point and then you're going to yeah. benefit from it. Yeah, or not read the clue, right? I mean, that's, that's part of the rushing. <laughs> yeah. No, that's something that uh, Kelly and Levon talked to me about too was, was because they're athletes and because they're competitive and they want to just – go, 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 go. But the race is hurry up, hurry up, stop. Hurry up, stop. Yep. Hurry, 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 stop. And that's just, there's something unnatural about that is Mm -hmm. what they kind of made me feel. Is that, is that true? Yeah, definitely. Because in sports, you don't really stop. You go until the game's over. Well, this game is however many legs you're in it. And it, you go, you stop for, you might stop for a couple hours. You might stop for 30 hours, whatever. But in each challenge, you're going to stop for an hour or so to do your challenge. So it's a bunch of stop and go, stop and go, not a full game. You, you got to see as many games, I guess. And that's the way you got to see it. You spoke about the void in, in competition. You're a professional athlete, former professional athlete at this point. Was that one of was would you say that was the biggest motivating factor for you or for D'Angelo to kind of get out there and and compete at a at a high level I mean you know I'm sure thousands of people could have been on the show and to know to have that as part of the stakes the million dollars part of the stakes was that able to fill that void was that kind of the main motivation or was it something else yeah it was definitely the main motivation was the competition aspect because we hadn't had it in two years. We'd have competing against each other. I have board game nights with some of my buddies and stuff like that. I hate to lose. So I'm super competitive and I'm going to call out if I see cheating, all that kind of stuff. I just hate losing. So the competitive aspect's always there. And this was a way to feed that competitive aspect with one of my closest friends. And we had the opportunity to do it together. So you mentioned challenges and here on the re-race we, oh, we have a, <laughs> so we uh we have a uh, a roadblock here for you i choose d'angelo uh, <laughs> so d'angelo <laughs> um so it's called truth or truth um just questions uh so which leg of the race was the best and why because stay in the movie scene to me just because Part of because of where we were at and the scene we did. I'm a huge movie guy. So being able to act out a movie scene was awesome. The learning the choreograph and doing it in a movie was awesome. And then Kazakhstan was probably the most 
was the best place we visited in my eyes because it was nothing what I expected. I didn't know what to expect going in. So going there and seeing it, it was amazing. And it's the one place I 100% want to go back and see more of because it, it just changed my whole perspective of what I even thought. And I don't even know what I thought of it. I just did not expect what, ha- what we saw. So you had the most pride putting that pin in the map, you'd say? Yes. Yes, that was for sure. And also I would say Cambodia, but it's hard to say Cambodia because we didn't actually get to see uh, Angkor Wat. We drove by it, but we didn't get to experience it. If I got to experience it, it would have been different, but I didn't get to truly experience Angkor Wat. So I have to go back just to try to see Angkor Wat, which that takes a little, little steam out of it. So that's why Kaiser stands on the one. Um, do you want to just do you want to touch on what you're saying there that you didn't get to experience something? And it sounds like you're kind of disappointed yeah, so- about something there. Yeah, so in Angkor Wat, you drive by it. You don't get to walk around it and see everything. Like we, obviously on the show, they talk about, they show the flyovers. We were all in the far corner, not even near where it was. We drove by it, we saw it, but I didn't get to learn the history about it. I didn't get to walk around it. I didn't get to go in there. I didn't get to see anything, all the structures. I had to see it from afar. And I'm one, and so is D'Angelo, we want to experience it. Like when we went to Egypt, we went in the pyramids, we got on the pyramids and we went to China. We went on the great wall. We had a snowball fight on the great wall. So like, we want to learn <laughs> and see these different things. Yeah. And Angkor Wat is one of the most famous and we didn't get to experience it. We got to see it, but you're not getting to experience it. Like if a challenge would have been in Angkor Wat, that would have been completely different, but driving by it just makes it not as big, as nice as Kazakhstan was for me. I can understand that, right? You go to these places and it's one thing to drive by. It's like the Statue of Liberty. I live in New York, right? I have been by the Statue of Liberty, I don't know how many times. I have never actually gone there. I have never- That's a lot of locals. A lot of locals in New York say that. Yeah, I just, I guess it's it's one of those things. You just, it isn't, but there's a definite difference between actually going and feeling and touching and reading and learning than- Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I was there and there it goes. And then you, yeah. Can you count you that, that you were there? If, if you didn't experience it, does it count? To me, I don't count. I don't count layovers in airports because that's the same thing. Yes. <laughs> I, yes, I'm with you. I, I've been, you know, I had a layover in Indianapolis. It's not on the map. I had a layover yep. in Minneapolis. It's not on the map. So yeah. You got to experience you. some part of it and explore it. Now I can mark off Cambodia because I experienced some of the stuff, but I can't yeah. mark off Angkor Wat. I have to go back to see Angkor Wat now. So that goes to my next question uh, for the roadblock. Number two, which country or cultural experience stands out the most? That obviously is not it. Maybe that's the one you want to go back to, but mm-hmm. what would be the uh, cultural experience that stands out the most? Maybe besides the Kazakhstan one, because you already mentioned that. Yeah. Um, honestly, it might have been, uh, it, it, it might actually still been Cambodia, just because getting to see It'd probably be either Cambodia or Philippines. Cambodia, just because we got to go to the temple, the little the monk temple, and do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. We got to do the little fish thing that they do. I got to watch the angel mm-hmm. struggle making its tile. Like so, seeing some <laughs> of that stuff was cool. Like so, that some of the culture aspect of it, which the culture they had to f- they pull these fish in every day and all that kind of stuff. That's their livelihood. The the floating mm-hmm. temples out there. That that's an awesome experience. And then even like with Manila, just going around seeing all the different things, I would say that is your experience in some of the city. You're going to enjoy some of it, but I would probably say culturally wise, would have probably been Cambodia. It it would have been just more if I got to see and spend time in Angkor Wat. <laughs> you'll get you'll get there. You'll get that. You got that pin ready to go. Yeah. I'm sure once once everything clears up. But number three, hardest part of the race, uh, other than. Me playing the drums, the watermelons probably, because that was a team thing. <laughs> yeah, what happened with the watermelons? What? So I, I thought you guys wa- would be so money at that. The watermelons was season twenty. I started binging twenty one, so I had no idea what the heck we had to do. And all it is is the large watermelons on the outside, the small ones inside. That simple. And we just put whatever everywhere. It all gets you off. You, if you don't have it the right way, everything's unbalanced. So, and it's super, it was super frustrating. It was super hot. We were there forever. Uh, so that would probably have been the worst. 
And so is there a steel drum behind you next to the guitar? Oh, no, never, you know? never. <laughs> I'll never, I'll never play that song Deo again. I don't like watermelon anymore. And I don't like the song Deo anymore. <laughs> well, what was so hard about Deo and the steel drum? Was I'm it not just... musically in- inclined. Yeah. Give me piano. Maybe I can learn it. Drumming rhythm. No, I'm good. It was supposed to be D'Angelo. That's his fault. Yeah. And so what, what was those experiences like when, when he struggled, what was, what did he get from you? And then on the other side of things, when well, you struggled, what was kind of your struggled. interaction there? I slept when he struggled. So <laughs> when he struggled, I, I right. took a nap because when he, I can't hear him. He wasn't really saying anything because he knows all we're going to be is negative. So it doesn't really matter. Right. It's not going to do anything for us. It's not going to help us or hurt us. So you just right. got to let them go. Just let them do what they're going to do. They'll figure it out. Hopefully. And th- the good thing is, hey, the first challenge was music. Our worst thing we were worried about was music or dance, and we survived. So if once we survived, we're like, okay, well, there shouldn't be another music challenge. So we should be fine. And then that's once you get the hardest one out that you think you can't do and you survive it, then now it should be smooth selling. Right. But, but music did come up a little bit later, and we'll talk about Correct. that. But um, number four, thing you'll miss the most thing i'll miss the most that you do you that you do miss okay that i miss the most um i don't miss the flying because i can't Mm -hmm. sleep on planes i would say just experiencing the different things that we experience on the race and again that competitive aspect in the middle of the race when you're running against other teams and you're trying not to be last i think that's probably the thing i'll miss the most because we don't get that every day. You, you don't get that type of thing of having that competitive nature. So I would say that would probably be number one. Yeah. I thought about you throughout all the episodes throughout the whole season, because you're six, five, right? Like, Oh yeah. No, six, five, six, 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 six. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I can't six, sleep six. on a plane. So, and we start as soon as we land. So I'm not sleeping that whole flight. Right. And, and I don't know if you saw the Andre the Giant documentary, like there was a big yep. thing about him traveling and all that. And you're not seven, four, 500 pounds giant, but you're a big guy. And like, to be even in cabs, you know, in, in a plane, I thought like he's at a disadvantage and that totally sucks. And so I was, I hear you on that. Um, number five, where did things go right? And number six, where did things go wrong? I would say things went right the second leg because we realized okay we got the music one out i think just after the first leg once we survived because i think that things started to go right for us there because now we're like okay our hardest challenge that we were super worried about we survived so now anything that comes now we should be able to handle no problem so i think that's what went right for us what went wrong was making a secret super secret alliance with the beard bros (laughs) What do you mean super secret? What do you? So we actually had an alliance with the Beard Bros uh, first leg before the start of the second leg, before they had an alliance with the other three, before the Mind Five, and we thought we were still in alliance at the very end with them. Uh, So, wait, so it was that secret that the show didn't even know about? So it it was during downtime in the airport that wasn't being recorded when this was discussed. So it was never recorded. So nobody had it. But we had our, our word that, hey, we're going to help us two teams get to the finals. And then things flipped. And so they just, in the end, they, they said, was so, that talked about the whole time? Were you guys continuing to check in at that super secret level throughout the not, whole race? Not really. Then- we just, uh, our, our whole thing was, hey, we, we had this word. We said, hey, we're good to go. So for us as athletes, hey, we're good. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Okay. We're, we're set. So your right. words, your bond. So they helped us in Brazil. And then what they don't show in the Philippines was we pointed out to where the uh, lions were for them, where to go mm-hmm. for that. And then at the horse challenge in Philippines, we traded answers. We told each other, hey, there's ones over there. And then we told them where one of the three things was. And then the very mm-hmm. last challenge, the music challenge, they were the only team that came up to them and said, hey, if you give us the answer, uh, we'll get, if we get it, we'll give it to you. If you get it, give it to us. So they were willing to help us. So at that point, we're still thinking our alliance is strong, but 
in the retrospect, you look at everything, they actually grew closer because they kept having regular check-ins with their alliance of three, talking all that kind of stuff. So that's kudos to them. I think they just covered their bases. I think they did a great job of making sure they had lines, anybody they could to make sure they survived. I think that's smart play by them. So I don't fault them, but as an right. athlete, you're, when you break your bond, that's a whole nother thing. I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm glad you brought that up too. Like for the, for the whole podcast and this whole exploration that I've done with this and some of my, my friends and my wife, we've kind of had as much fun as, as we've had with it as we could, right? We um, so to try to have as much fun as we could with it. We kind of came up with these rankings and this whole thing and we went into it and I had you guys number one. I mean, it was, it was a no brainer for me. I mean, you're athletes, you're on my team, but you're professional athletes. That's the thing that stuck out to me the most, right? You're competitive, you're athletic, you have endurance, the preparation, all, all the traits that I think matter aside from what luck, you know, luck you can't mm -hmm. really control for or know how you never know who's going to know how to play the steel drum something like that yeah. I mean, you can't can't really predict that but i had you number one um and it's because of all the things i just said so talk to me about on the race how much did being professional athletes matter uh, I don't think it mattered as much. I think obviously it does when you're running and not getting tired. I think the probably the thing where it is helpful the most is when you face adversity. Because in, in sports, you face adversity on a daily basis in practice, games, doesn't matter in anything. You're facing adversity. Yeah, you've everybody faces adversity in life, but sports really you really truly face adversity when you're head to head against somebody like that so i think when you get down on yourself you know how to overcome that adversity and fight through it and i think that is part of like the challenge aspects so like for the still jump i was not gonna let it defeat me i could have easily just hey whatever it's adversity i can't overcome this but i was not mm -hmm. i was not gonna let adversity win so i think that would probably be the biggest thing as an athlete, as a professional athlete is you deal with daily adversity all the time in a competitive nature. So this is a competitive nature adversity. So this, I think that correlation is huge. And obviously if there was, a, if there was more strength challenges, it would have been huge. There wasn't very many strength challenges, if any at all, I don't count the watermelons as strength. So I think that would have been huge, but like running, running to different places, that's probably, but every, a lot of people are in shape. Everybody in the, in the cast, they were in shape. They, they weren't professional athletes. So you didn't have to run miles. That would have been different if there was miles to run than it would. But so I think the biggest thing would probably just be adversity, overcoming adversity. It's interesting that that piece of it helped you guys not get eliminated in like that leg, for example, mm -hmm. on the first leg. But the athlete piece kind of, from what you tell me, it sounds like it bit you a little bit with the super al secret alliance with the beard bros and kind of like that whole camaraderie, like we're athletes, we're in this, we're good, our word is good and kind of that kind of bit you there Correct. too. So it almost, it helped you, but it in the kind of stay out of last place in those kind of like the first leg, but in the end kind of bit you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so did you find that the race was more physical or was it more mental and did it, how did it stack up to your expectations going into the race? I think it was a good mix of both. But when I say physical, it's not like physically challenging, like events It's more of like physically challenged on your body from the lack of sleep and the heat and dealing with outside circumstances, not per pertaining to the challenges because they weren't really as physical. Most of those were mental mm -hmm. and, and paying attention to detail, which those did well. We, I, as yeah. you'll get, as we'll talk about in France, I was out there in less than five minutes with the paint challenge, which hurt us in the back end, but I probably should have took longer on it, but because I got so quick on it, it hurt me. But those type of things, so I don't think it was, there wasn't physical challenges that were tough. It was more of the physical aspect of the race, of flying, getting off a plane, then going and being tired, your body being tired, fighting the different elements with that type of stuff and then just being sore throughout it because you had like especially after watermelons everybody that did the watermelons backs were on fire because it's a lot of bending over so i think just things like that and getting through that type of stuff it wasn't more physically demanding challenges just physically demanding as it as its own in the race so how let's go back to france how did the the 
getting out of there in five minutes and completing the challenge hurt you. So in France, that's where the last music box was for the last challenge. Right. So the last thing was you had to hear music. Well, I was not in there for more than five minutes. So I never <laughs> right. heard, <clears throat> excuse me, I never heard music. So if I would have been there for 20 minutes, yeah, I probably would have heard music, but I got out so quick. I never heard any music playing. So I never thought France would have music because where, where did we have music? And that, that and D didn't, wasn't in there. It was just me. So, right. and Razzpec, me doing it so quick actually hurt me on that because I would have never picked France as having music. So that, that's where it hurt us. And is that the one that you guys had, you were missing? Correct. Because you had, there was one where you had. Yep, that was the one we missed. Oh God. Cause we knew two for sure. We did not know the third one for sure. We were pretty positive, but we weren't a hundred percent. So that's why we didn't use those three every time. The and Paraguay then, one? Yeah. So we, we were pretty sure, but we weren't a hundred percent positive on it. And plus when they play it on guitar, classical music does not sound like anything from guitar. <laughs> so I still would have, it would have, I probably would have recognized music in general in France, but being there not long enough makes it hard. Wow. So let's go to the final challenge then, since we're talking about it. I can't help but think about, you know, at the end, you guys took the penalty once you had kind of been done in whatever. Did you ever think about taking the penalty at some point before as like a strategy move to try to just take the penalty and, and see if you could maybe talk somebody else into it and just promote like somebody else coming with you? Or did that ever so, cross your mind? So we didn't because we didn't think it was going to be as hard as it was. I don't think any team thought it was going to be as hard as it was. We didn't think we were going to struggle as much. But again, that's where the rushing aspect came in. Everybody was trying to rush and get through it because all the teams were there and they're all worried and nobody was talking to each other. So that was probably part of the issue why nobody even mentioned it. We didn't think it was going to take three and a half hours or whatever. But that's unfortunate. Looking back, hey, we should have just took a pill as soon as we showed up. But you don't know that going in, especially as I binge watched the 10 seasons before. These type of challenges are usually reserved for the last episode, yep. not the episode before. So we're not prepared for that. They right. mixed it up, but that's not something that we were expecting that on the last leg to separate people. And so you have your winner and all that kind of stuff, not to separate the three from the four. So then take me through that moment where obviously you said three and a half hours, people are struggling. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows it. And then there's a moment when it clicks and they know it and they get it and you guys are not part of that. So yeah. So how does that, how do you, how do you respond to that? How does D'Angelo respond to that? Yeah, how does so that play out? Riley and Madison were actually in front of us. We were behind them to get checked when they got it right. And then they ran off away to the left around us all the way around the truck and went back to them to tell them. And then we, so we got checked and we were wrong, but we already saw them. He, we saw them talking to him. We knew that we gave them the answer. We're like, well, sounds like we're done because we know the pit stop was next. We didn't have any idea what the answer was. So obviously it was super frustrating, especially during that exact leg. They came up to us and said, hey, if you let us get the answer, let us know. If we get it, we'll let you know. So still right. thinking we were in the alliance with them right. because we actually helped each other three times, two time, two other times during that exact leg. So we're thinking it's strong. It's a super frustrating and dejected feeling because of that aspect and knowing that hey they gave them the answers we don't even have an opportunity to compete because they don't have to guess the answers they were given it is there a football moment that compares to it is there one that's is it worse where does that kind of rank in that whole uh, uh, i would say i would say losing a football game is probably worse because that's issue. That was our livelihood. That's what we, yeah. we hate losing. Obviously you hate losing in this too, but obviously it's, it's a race for a million dollars. Like D'Anzo put it perfectly. He said in football, there's not a money aspect tied to the end of a game. There's a money aspect tied to the end of this game. So people can do whatever they want to make sure they get the opportunity to get that money. And in NFL, it's not based off of money at the end of the game. You're just playing the game to play the game and win. That's what you're trying to do. So it's a different feeling like this because we know, hey, we're, it's a more understanding feeling because now there's money tied to it. So let's go to the end then. You guys get to the mat. There's your reaction that's 
traditional, I would say. Uh, I'm sure you you saw some similar uh, reactions in your 10 season binge watch. This was an amazing experience. Enjoyed your time. D'Angelo's was not that. It was not what you'd come to expect. Mm -hmm. As as an athlete, as a coach, I understand it. I I I, I actually kind of loved what he said because I know at some level how frustrating losing can be. I understand that the competitiveness that obviously fuels the two of you at some level, again, I didn't play in the NFL, but I know that that's something that you guys lead with. And I can only imagine the amount of frustration that was in that moment, but just take me through that, that moment of getting to the mat, hearing Phil say that you guys are eliminated and then D'Angelo's reaction and, and kind of what unfolded from there. So me and D actually talked about this story a few times. It's a good story leading up to the mat. So as we're walking up to the mat, I know D's pissed. And D's the type, right. he's just going to be honest. He's going to tell you his true feelings because yeah. why does he need to sugarcoat it? He's just going to be honest who he is, not lie yep. to make you happy. That's just not who he is. So I knew he's pissed. So as we're walking to the mat, I said, D, do not embarrass me. So he's like, <laughs> he's like, okay, I got you. Don't worry. Don't worry. And then he just blacks out and he says what he says. But there, what I've tried to explain to people is like, yes, it, what he said was not the proper thing to say. I agree. He said it from because sure. how he's feeling it. But you have to understand the certain aspects of why he said he, why he said what he said. He was under the pretense that he didn't get to see different things. Because in previous seasons, people got to walk around, go to the Eiffel Tower in Paris and see stuff before they had to go to their flight. And stuff like right. that. There was other seasons where they got to do it. We never got a chance to do that. So he was under the false pretense he would get to see stuff. When we were in Paris, he's sitting in his airport in his hotel room, staring out the window at the Eiffel Tower. Doesn't get to see it. Driving by Angkor Wat in Cambodia, frustrating for him. Right. The, I think the biggest thing is being locked in his room where we can't even go to the to work out to the pool. Nothing. You have to stay in your room for thirty hours. He's not ready for that because. We've traveled before. We've traveled together. He's never had to do right. that. He's never experienced that type of thing. And he, I knew he right. knew his race, but he, he went in blind because I asked him to do it. He would never right. knew anything about the race. So there's, there's those factors. He's obviously missing his family. He's never been away from his family longer than a week. He's never even been away from his family longer than a day without being able to talk to him. So, and he, so he has three kids. So that's the first time he's ever experienced that. That's taking a toll on him. Obviously, you stack that on top of, hey, the people we had a our word we gave our word to, they gave their word to, broke their bond as an athlete. That hurts. So you have yeah. all these extenuating factors taken off, and then you ask him how he feels. Of course, he's going to be frustrated because right. if he went on his own, he doesn't have to deal with the race. He doesn't have to have to worry about somebody trying to, in that terms, backstabbing so that they can move mm -hmm. on. And he can go see anything he wants and do whatever he wants. Go see Anchor Watt. He doesn't have to stay in a hotel room. There's, and he can talk to his family or he can bring his family with him. So there's all these other things that went into it, but people only harp on the one thing he said that, yeah, it's not great, but there's all these reasons why he said it that led to that. It wasn't one thing because he has said it from day one to day till, till now. He said from this time we got on the start line, to the time we hit the pit stop, I loved everything about the race. Doing the race was awesome. Outside of the race, he hated. because, And so he said those experiences outweighed the positives of during the race. So in that retrospect, right. he didn't enjoy the race because the negatives outweighed the positive. But he loved the actual racing aspect. But people aren't going to take the time to listen to that and see that because they just, they just, a lot of people just read, read the clickbait or listen to the top audio and that's it. They don't want to know why there's a reason why. And yeah, you can say, Oh, you can't defend it, but everybody's going to be upset and frustrated at that time. And then on top of everything else that he was going through and dealing with, that's the reason why his comments came out the way they were. Well, on the re race, we'll I understand how he feels as much as I could. And I appreciate you sharing that because I didn't know those different details. And I think that's, to your point, that helps make more sense of it, you know, and I, I just, I can understand the frustration and the competitiveness again, just getting the best of you in that moment. Um, yeah. I'm like you, I, I try, I, I'm the guy at, at game nights, that's the villain and trying to win. And I don't care if it's my mom, you know, yeah. and I can I imagine with those. Yes. Yeah. That's, it's as simple as that. And I, 
so I can understand. So D'Angelo, it's all good. Um, let me ask you this, because it's when you were explaining that about how the race was great, but the other stuff was tough. Is that kind of like, it kind of reminds me of uh, the idea that in the NFL or in, in just coaching, I know that there are some players that love game day, love, love coming to in the uniform and playing and they show up and boom, they can do it. But the practice and the, the two a days and the, the workouts, is it similar to that? Does it bring up kind of memories of that? It's, it's not, at, it's not too similar just because in the aspect of like football, for example, showing up to practice and doing workouts, you're more than just yourself on the race. You're just your team in practice. Right. Everybody needs to rely on you. Everybody needs to count on you. You need to be a good leader. You need to show that other players can't do this. If you start doing all that, then the people that can't just show up on game day and play, they're going to want to do it. And they're going to think they can do it. And then that's when your team right. falls off. So it's more of you're holding your team accountable by holding yourself accountable on a race. It's just you and your partner you know, you can count on them for it. It's not, there's not the correlations a lot harder to find in that aspect, just because yeah, you can show up for a game day and play, but if you don't show up for all the other stuff, you're going to get hurt at some point. Your team's going to look at you a different way. You won't be considered a leader and you're not going to make it to the next level because that's a red flag. I guess I was just trying to just trying to understand just how, um, how difficult it would be to, to do, to do what you were describing, that you just come and you do this race and the race is great and the adrenaline, you're seeing places, but you can't see them. And then you get to sit in a hotel room for 30 hours. I mean, that's, that's gotta yeah, be it's, insanely it's, Like for me, I'm fine with it because it's whatever. I, again, I yeah. binge watch, I prepared, he didn't. So he's right, right. not knowing, which that's his yeah. fault on his own, but he only did yeah. the race because I asked him to do the race. And he said, yes. Again, he gave me his word. At any time, he yeah. could have backed out, but because he gave me his word, he was not going to do that. So, and I just had to reel him in. I just had to do what I have to do for him and make sure he does continues and keeps going because that's how our relationship is. I think I can control his emotions on things and make sure and calm him down, and he knows what how I tick. A couple more things, but we're up to our second uh, second <laughs> challenge here. Uh, oh, it's a. Uh, it's a detour here. So let me ask you, would you uh, rather awards or penalties? Awards or penalties? Let's go with, you know, I'm never an awards guy. So let's go penalties. All right. Um, so what was the worst move of the race? Could be you guys, could be anybody. Worst move. So I'm going to say our alliance with the beer bros because it bit us in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say... Uh, I would say, yeah, that probably, to, that's just personally, I would think in the race, I don't think there was any like super bad moves. I don't think anybody did anything that was going to hurt anybody else. I think just that one thing probably hurt us the most. I don't think there was anything against other people that anybody did. If you were to partner with somebody for the second race. That, that's so who, on, that was on this race. Yeah, that was on this race. Who would be the wrong choice? The wrong choice. Who? Well, to go with the penalties. D'Angelo. <laughs> he would be the wrong choice. I, I, just the reason why I say he'd be the wrong place person because he would not want to do it again unless it was for charity. And that'd still be a hard trying to get him to do it. So I think he would be the hardest one to deal with. <laughs> All right. Who would be the who would be the best choice then out Chief. of anybody else? Don't worry. My choice Chief. would be cheap because anything musical he's got, he's dominating it. He has, he proved on the thing. So, Hey, my weakness is his strength. And I think we'd be fine with everything else. And was there any sort of, um, you know, you know, the segment on the uh, NFL countdown on, on uh, ESPN, the come on man thing. Was there any that like, come on, man, like, like snafu, like kind of like, Oh my goodness. I look like such a dope here kind of moment that was, uh, that happened. Um, I would say maybe just playing the steel drums. Cause I looked terrible. <laughs> I was so stiff. I got it now. I got the wrist. I can do it now, but that was terrible. <laughs> All right, Gary, last thing, last clue here. We got a root info. Um, so what's next for you? What's the next, uh, what's the next tack in the map? 
What's the next pin? What do you, what, what's on deck for you going forward here, pal? So obviously we're, we're probably not going to be able to do AFWB this year because of COVID. We're still trying to work at it, but we don't know if it's going to be possible. Uh, and same with traveling. Traveling's on a hiatus right now because you can't, a lot of countries you still can't go to. But I do know like me, Ben Garland and Brett Hunley, we're trying to do something where we go overseas, visit somewhere, do some stuff. And then we bring somebody with us, whether it be a celebrity, whether it be an average Joe, whether it be a military person, and we bring them over and they have to do everything we do. No questions asked. They have to do it because we're all adventurous. So we're going to put them, put them on the edge, make them do something different, just have fun and just, and then give back some way. So we're trying to just do something like that, trying to get something like that moving, obviously going to always continue the nonprofit. So I think just staying busy, staying, doing things. Me and D have, D have our podcast. We do that every week. So just having fun. I think enjoying life, trying to travel the world, see all it has to offer because I think it's all about experience. There's experiencing new things. That's what it's all about. So even I want to learn the piano. I haven't learned it yet, but I, I have some knowledge, but I think that's my one big thing I want to do is I want to learn the piano. I also have the guitar back here because I would love to play the guitar. Those are the two ones I'm trying. I want to learn to play. So I'm always setting new goals and always setting new things to try to achieve. Gary, I appreciate uh, everything you're, you're saying, everything about your message. Um, I'm an experienced guy too. Life's about the experiences and it's about the people you share them with. And so the Re Raceables podcast has been an experience for me and I appreciate your time and you sharing in this experience with me as well. It's been an honor. It's been wonderful to get to know you, uh, a little bit about your story and your experiences. Um, and thank you for inspiring me to try to get some more pins in my map and get a world map. I got to get on the world map too. So I appreciate you, Gary. I, I thank you so much for being on the Re Raceables podcast. No problem. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.